Hey guys, I'm Jake Richards and back with another step by step. In today's episode, it's the launch of a new series where I'll be covering the painting of a Forge World Malkador and Furnace. Part 1 today covers the base coat and let's get started. I start by going about this model by putting on several nice light coats of Vallejo Black Primer. Make sure to keep it light and keep it simple and not to let the paint obscure any details. Several passes are always better than one large lumpy pass, so I took my time at this. And yeah, I know that going about priming the bottom of the model seemed a little last nine, but you never know when the different features will be in view. So just for the sake that this is a gaming piece, I did make sure to go about all the different nooks and crannies as well as the bottom parts and make sure those were adequately covered with a black primer. Because you never know when stuff will pop up. Anyways, moving on to the base colors. For this one, I wanted to emulate a World War I German tank. So I went about using dull green for the first pass and I built this up in very gradual layers. Since I did start out with the black primer, I made sure to use that black primer color as a pre-shade. So I went and I did add the green color to all the areas I could find, but I did make a point of keeping the areas, say like around the rivets, around the different uh, steel plating in there to make sure that was just more darker than it would be with the pure base coat color. It creates a nice natural shadow and creates more contrast in the long run. Once the dull green was all put in place correctly, I went about adding the first pass of the camouflage color, ochre yellow. In this case, you know, it's not really supposed to look like any certain camouflage pattern that was ever used historically. I just went about and had some fun with it. I just loosely based it off of what I saw with some World War I tanks and even just some stuff that was applied in the field both in World War I and World War II. Moving on to the second color, I established some clay brown accents to go along with the lighter color I just applied. Again, this was just loosely applied here and there. It could have been applied by the crew at some point, or heck, even out of the factory, most likely was applied with the crew. But I just had some fun and added it here and there as I felt necessary and just kept going with it. After I was done applying the base coat and the camouflage lines, I wanted to go back and clean up the different areas with the black primer. This would reestablish and correct any overspray areas, and since I am using a darker color like this, and with the assistance of some finer brush control, I was able to reestablish some dark areas and also create a base foundation for the areas that should be a dull green color. I didn't worry too much about getting any of the overspray on the different portions of the vehicle or the trailer in the back because I kept the paint light enough that if it really needed to come off, I could take some thinner and just take it off. Here I'm taking some heavy blue gray and I'm going over the, all the areas that I want to look like they're heat treated or have it exposed to some massive heat here and there. Almost kind of what you have like in the an exhaust of a tank or either a car. They're always this off gray color with a lot of different striations of red and oranges in there. And you'll see how I apply that later on in the video series. Once the gray was done, I decided to try out some more of the new Ammo by Meg dry brush paint, in this case a gunmetal. I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do at this stage. I know for a fact I wanted to do the front muzzle or or the flame guard at the very front of the tank using this color. I did apply to the tracks in this case just to see how it looked. I wasn't quite sold on the look because I don't like to paint my tracks, my tanks with an actual metallic color. I more so use that metallic color as an accent. But I did make sure to get the wheels and for sure the nozzle of the large flame elements in the front of the tank. But overall, it's a pretty fun uh, method of uh, paint to use. This new stuff is great. You can apply it heavy or, you know, sparingly. In this case, it's more of a wet dry brush. Cool. 
Once the metal elements are done with the model, I went about varnishing it with the satin varnish by Vallejo. This is the only point in the entire model I will varnish it, and I decided on using a satin varnish because it's a nice equal ground between using a gloss and a flat varnish. After that, I let it dry for at least 24 hours and I was ready for the next stage. That's all for this video. If you want to see what's coming up next, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for the second portion of this series. Thanks and have a great one. Wash your hands, stay safe, have a good one.